Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to Valley Springs. Just had some lunch. It's been a bit, bit of a busy morning here. We had contractors, as usual. Oh, what, what day didn't start? To, actually, it's been a while since we had a day that started with contractors. But uh, I had contractors here all uh, morning helping me uh, put in the uh, the newest addition to the farm here, the uh, the mini BGA, which has uh, changed my thoughts on a few things. So. I'll, share those with you now let's just shut this off for a second here uh so first of all uh i had some guys in here and we expanded the pad out to accommodate the bga here uh this will take everything pretty much uh and produce electricity uh methane and digestate uh, so I have the electric, uh, I have a, a, a worked with the local town council here to sell the electricity into the grid. So every hour on the hour, pretty much, I get a, uh, I get a paycheck now. If we can accumulate about $25,000 worth of electricity, I think uh, the average going rate, it's around, I want to say it's like twelve or $13,000. I can't really remember. But, uh, but anyways, yeah. So in here, we can put a few things. So we can play silage into it. Uh, we can put slurry, manure, both of which we're going to be producing with our cows and pigs. Sugar beet, uh, cut and sugar beets. So I have uh, sugar beets being produced by the greenhouses. Uh, potatoes also, but I do need to get some of the stuff into the, uh, I mean, the pigs are eating this as well, right? So I can't just put it all here. And then straw. I mean, we're going to need straw for the, uh, it's hard, right? Because you're going to need straw for the, for the animals. And then that'll, I think, enable them to produce either manure and or slurry or you know i don't know whether it's one or the other or whatever but uh, so the straw will probably continue to go into the animals uh the manure and slurry however will be coming over here to help make electricity uh the electric charge methane and digestate uh, actually if you look right now it's 11 59 we're just about to tick over to 12 noon we got about 10 or eleven thousand dollars or there, see that? I didn't even see how many. Was it four or five grand? Maybe about five grand. We had ten. We had about ten or eleven thousand units of uh, kilowatts of electricity. So, so I want to say it was like five or six thousand uh, dollars. I'll hop into my bank, uh, my banking here for one sec. So uh, the only thing that I've sold in in I believe in September, but definitely today has been has been electricity. Uh, so we're sitting with about twenty five thousand dollars today so far with electricity, which is. Fantastic. Oh, actually, you know what? I spoke out of turn there. Uh, no, we're not going to be putting slurry in here. Um, uh, I believe I have a I have a plan for slurry and uh, and digestate. So let me go show you what I bought. Uh, so I mentioned uh, while we're driving there, we'll uh, I'll chat for a second. So I mentioned that I had a slight change of plans based on this BGA. So the fact that the BGA is turning silage into uh, cash for us at what I can only imagine is a is a faster rate than than if we were selling it out to, to, out to the market. Um, I'm going to be taking so our our, our uh, silage uh, fermenter there is now distributing uh, directly into the BGA. Now we have the grass dryer. Uh, I'm going to be I am going to be feeding the the eventual cows hay only no no uh no mix there so uh if there is a bit of a hit obviously in the in the uh the yield and the milk but we're going to take that hit and put the silage directly into the animal or into the bj um so i bought this this is now owned by uh my farm uh this lot here we're going to be i got another contractor lined up to uh to come and put a building into here for us uh where we can take our digestate and quite possibly our slurry and process it and sell it into a uh, foreign market where they pay far more than the local market here uh so I need to get this yard. I'm, I'm not going to just. So basically, I got to gravel this entire yard here, and then uh, and then we'll be able to put that in. Um, but I don't want to gravel it until we get to get it mowed out. That piece of property was still being held by. Uh, do you remember Liam, the farmer that I bought the whole the whole farm from, basically? Uh, so that that piece of land there was still being held by him. Uh, I could probably just. I will drive in there and turn around. 
so I gave him a call. Uh, I want to say that it was like less than $30,000 for this piece of land here, which is pretty good. <clears throat> Once we get, um, so the total build here, yeah, I think it was about $25,000 because the building that we're going to put in by the time we pay the contractor is going to be about 50000 And I seem to remember thinking that it was going to be about $75,000 to get the new uh, the new thing set up there. Not to mention uh, the gravel and everything too, but <clears throat> I don't know how much that's gonna cost. So right now, what we're gonna do is go and get the mower and get that mowed out, and then we'll grab the grass off of that. We'll probably be able to top up our, our hay, our, our grass dryer, and then we'll put the rest into our, our money printer. I mean, the fermenting silo. So the, the, when I set the fermenting silo to distribute, uh, it didn't just empty immediately because the BJ only holds uh, 75,000 liters of silage. So it's going to sort of, it's, it's on a slow drip, so to speak. So as, the, uh, as there's room, it will, uh, it will feed. I'll just get backed in here. I've been having problems with the transmission this today. Oh, and that reminds me actually, um, early this morning, I got a call from Steve down at the dealership, of course. We all like to hear from Steve because it usually means there's an opportunity potentially uh, presenting itself. He was funny. He uh, <laughs> So yes, there is 100% an opportunity coming in. I didn't quite got, uh, grasp everything he said, but I think he mentioned that there's a case being traded in. I want to say it's a case. And uh, he thought we might be interested here on the farm. Uh, it's going to be somewhere near... Oops, what did I just do? What did I just do? Hold on, sorry. Yeah, I thought I did that. I wanted to raise the front mower and then I ended up dropping the back mower. Um, yeah, sorry. So, uh, I, I think, I think for about a hundred grand, we can pick up what should be a $200,000 tractor that will, uh, push somewhere in the neighborhood of 240 horsepower, I believe. Um, and be a real welcome addition to our farm, I think. Uh, so he's going to let me know when that comes in and we're going to check it out. Whether or not we buy it, I don't know. Uh, we'll see. Knowing, knowing me, you know, it may, I may, it may have already convinced myself that I'm going to buy it. Yeah. He said the farmer had a, uh, custom paint job done and, and some other stuff. Uh, so it's not exactly, uh, stock, but that's okay. So I'll grab kind of as much as I can off of here. I'm not going to lose sleep if I miss any, and then we'll have a truck come in and really gravel this yard out so we can put down the new building. It's a, basically a, a processing plant for uh, slurry and digestate, and I believe manure also, um, but it enables us to access foreign markets because locally here that stuff is really worth nothing, but uh, there are places where... Uh, I guess the quality of their slurry is real, uh, is crap. And, uh, and they can't produce digestate for whatever reason. So our region here with our abundance of lush green Irish grass and, uh, I guess the diet that our animals eat, uh, create a really nice, uh, nutrient rich fertilizer product. Uh, so it goes for big money. So there's a broker that uh, that I actually was introduced to through the uh, through my morning coffee sh uh, stop there with the boys. And uh, anyways, we got talking and he said, well, if you're producing that uh, that stuff, I've got I got a market for it. So um, so the broker takes a bit of a, a cut uh, and uh, we just have to invest in the initial uh, setup, the building and everything. And then it's uh, it's pretty good after that. I mean, obviously, we have to feed the building and stuff. So. Um, God, what else happened? Oh, I was on the phone with uh, the local, well, it's not, not local necessarily. They're, uh, um, it's an agricultural college out of the city. Uh, so a couple hours drive anyways. But uh, so they were a, a, um, kind of a 
residency co-op program for their agricultural uh, uh, students. And they uh, basically will give students the opportunity on short term uh, towards their 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 credits, towards their uh, college degree um, certificate, whatever they they will come and stay on a farm and uh, and do basically just like farmhand stuff. Um, so I'm in the process of registering for that program, which means we're going to have to put up a bit of lodging here. And uh, and then we'll have, um, I don't know, essentially we'll have some help on, on site here. Uh, and they can do, um, you know, they can do some of the small stuff like feed the animals. Uh, I can probably get them to do things like mow, you know, when it's time to mow the big, the big field over there, uh, the one, the farm field or whatever, uh, we can probably get them to mow that, uh, you know, really do whatever we want as long as it's farm related and they can, uh, you know, they can use that, uh, towards their graduating, which is cool. Uh, so they get the opportunity and I get, uh, other than the investment up front, um, obviously for, uh, lodging and, and, uh, and that I get, uh, I get the benefit of uh, some free help. <laughs> Nothing's free in this world, right? So I'm gonna have to commit some space. I'll probably have to put in two buildings uh, for them to to stay in. And uh, I mean, they they have to do their own food and all that stuff. So imagine that I'll be, I'll be seeing the Uber drivers uh, around here a little more often. But, uh, but yeah, I think it's a good program. I don't mind supporting supporting it and I do like to uh, obviously take advantage of the free labor free ish ish free ish I'll right, squeak a little more here then we'll go grab the forge wagon and pick this up Excellent. So yeah, there's some investment coming here. Um, I've already spent money on the property. So uh, I bought that, uh, like I said, from Liam. So that money's already spent. Uh, I do need to pay the contractor to put the building in. So there'll be about a $50,000 price tag on that. Uh, I need to, <clears throat> I need to get a, uh, a tanker uh, specifically. So I can't use so we have a water tanker right now uh, that we've been using to fill the distributor in the back there. Uh, I took a good run at that. I think I might have 70 or 80,000 liters in that now. That was that was uh, mind numbing <laughs> just getting that thing filled. But anyways, it's good now. Um, so or good for now, I guess I should say. So uh, I do. Yeah. So like I said, I do need to get a tanker because I'm going to need something that I can load the well, I got to I got to get the even though we're all it's sort of like all on the same property here i still need to get the um the slurry out of the tanks here and get it into into the processing um uh, and same with the digestate now apparently uh i can uh transport slurry and digestate in the same uh the same tanker at some point i think i will look for separate tankers uh only just so i can keep them it just it just saves me from kind of having to probably make more trips than needed but uh perhaps at the, unless i find something that's just a steal at the beginning here i'll probably just run with the uh with the one tanker what i'd really like to find is maybe an old truck or something that's got a tanker body uh instead of something i have to tow oh i can't remember where i put the forge wagon Uh, okay, so let's grab that. Should be able to fit through here. So now that I'm going to be uh, just putting, uh, just feeding the the cattle hay. I see the cattle. I don't even have cows. I gotta, I gotta get to the stockyard. Basically, they still have some cows earmarked for me, and I gotta get down there and get that deal done. But now that I'm gonna be doing that, uh, I no longer. Oh, shoot. I should probably grab the windrow. Hang tight, I'll be right back. 
Yeah, I figure I better put this in rows first. Otherwise, we could be uh, driving around forever trying to pick all that uh, all that grass up. Um, anyways, like I was saying, I, I don't need the the um, the mixing trailer anymore. Uh, so that's something that we can get sold. I mean, we kind of I, I well, I'll find out anyways. I, I feel like we stole it at the auction, but uh, I guess we'll find out when it's time to sell it, won't we? I kind of I don't know whether I should just hang on to it for a bit and then um, you know and then eventually try to sell it or in case we need it I don't want to be a hoarder that oh shoot no 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 that's not what we wanted all right got that back there let's get Why am I drawing a oh that's right <laughs> Oh my gosh, I'm losing track of everything here. That's right, I forgot I had that front front mounted uh windrow. <laughs> Shoot. Okay, I'll I'll be alright, don't worry. I mean it's only been uh it's only been in, in you know better part of a month since we saw each other last, so <laughs> I'll survive. Okay, just wanted to make sure I had that raised. I'm trying to think of what else has been going on since we saw each other last. Bit of a tight squeeze through here, but we'll make it. I don't, honestly, I don't know how much grass I'm going to get off here uh, to to know whether this is even worth it. But it's hard to uh, it's hard to let any grass go <laughs> once when it's there, and you know that you can turn it into something uh, valuable. Um, then it's hard to just you know it, it's it's hard to just gravel over it. <laughs> Now what I don't mind graveling over is that ugly looking ground texture. That's uh that's fine. So so with I mean we have obviously the two crop fields uh that we've that we've planted. Um three, sorry, three three crop fields because we had the one over on this side. Um uh, what did we plant over there? Canola and something else? I don't remember. Uh, we've got the... L uh, I want to say the linseed, the flower flowers on this side. Um, but with, so with that, obviously we're going to have... I mean, we're, we're kind of... The, in the intention there was to uh, grow food for the animals, right? Um, so... So I'm trying to navigate this corner. I did mention at some point that I'm not really good at doing two things at once, right? Uh, yeah. So, anyways, uh, growing food for the animals. What I like is with the uh, with this deal I have with the with the county now to be able to sell power into the grid, and the uh, and then and then kind of discovering this uh, global market for uh, for uh, digestate and slurry. Uh, I I feel like. We sort of have a bit of direction, and and remember, I've got to pay off 1.4 million dollars to a Canadian bank that I borrowed before I came here. Now, uh, monthly, I've been making my payments, which are uh, a little over or right around ten thousand uh, dollars. But I think what did I say about six thousand of that is principal, and the rest is interest. So, you know, ten months is only sixty thousand uh, dollars that I'll pay off of the principal, which is not much. What is that about 70 grand a year? So, I mean, you kind of got to do the math to figure out how many years it would take me if I was just making my payments. Well, actually, I think I have it for, I can't remember how long the loan was for. Anyways, I'll have to go check all that. But, uh, we got to, I want to start getting this loan paid off. I don't, I don't want to be handicapped by this loan. If I decide that I want to do something in life, I mean, I may decide to move again, right? <laughs> we may decide that Ireland's not the place to be and we may, may want to move. I, I don't want to be, handicapped by the fact that I still owe all this money in case we're in a situation where we want to borrow right I mean I've always uh, you know dreamt of being a rancher um, so you know who knows we might end up back in North America 
I, I, I don't see that happening anytime soon because, uh, you know, we're still new here, but you never know. I'm not one to uh, close myself off to opportunities. But in saying that, I can't start moving all over the place if I owe a bunch of money here. So, well, not here, but to the bank, the bank back in Canada. So my best opportunity to generate funds to get all that paid off is going to be right here on the farm. Uh, what I'm wondering is, depending on how quickly I can process, uh, you know, s silage and turn that into opportunity there with the BGA, I'm wondering if, as we monitor that, will we need more land? Um, land that would give us access to more material that we could then convert. Just a thought. All right, whatever opportunity Steve might have for us at the store might be coming uh, at a moment, uh, not a moment too soon. This, uh, I don't know what, what happened, uh, but this seemed uh, woefully underpowered. I'm leaving grass in the field there, but I'm worried I'm gonna get stuck. I almost got stuck there a couple times. I've got a little bit more room in the trailer. Let's see if I can buzz past here and grab this grass. Maybe if I don't stop. I got a little bit more in the corner here. Do a flyby. Not exactly flying for this flyby, but I think I'm getting some of the grass. Come on. Jeez, okay, well, if I can make a quick loop here, I should be able to get out in one piece, and, uh, and that's it. And then we'll start laying some gravel down. Maybe able to put a shed or something over here, too, depending on how large this, uh, this building is. I only talked to the guy in concept. I'm not entirely sure exactly how large a footprint this uh, processing uh, building is going to be, but or what it what it even looks like. But uh, am I going to make this corner? No, let's hit the road here. It's good to be back on Valley Springs. I ended up. Uh, God, did I miss two weeks with this? I know I missed a week for sure. Things just got so busy, and I just can't, uh, I just can't help it. Um, there's a, uh, seasonal change here, obviously, with snow disappearing and spring sp springing, <laughs> spring sprunging. Um, well, actually, I said I was going to top up the grass dryer first. Who knows? Maybe all this will go into the grass dryer. We got lots of silage. Uh, but yeah, anyways, it's required a lot of uh, updating of uh, marketing material for one of the industries that I've uh, that I'm married to, and anyways, it's a uh, it's been a lot of <laughs> a lot of work lately. So oh yeah, we got lots of room. So we have two hundred fifty thousand liters of hay already, and we'll put that roughly thirty thousand liters of grass into the uh, into here. So we'll we'll have all said uh, what is that going to be about th roughly three around 350,000 liters of of hay that we can feed cows i'm 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 ha i almost feel like freed with that decision to to s serve cow serve cows to serve the cows to serve hay to the cows um because it's sort of an, an additional step that I no longer have to do i mean i can basically just come here load up the hay and then uh and then bring it over to uh bring it over to the barn uh, rather than having that extra step of you know having to get the mix right um, which I really don't like having to do uh, I've got a great building over on Comlands which I've I've really enjoyed using I mean it's still a pain in the butt because you have to do the work but uh, but it's 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 not bad you don't have to worry about the mix like it's not like I have to kind of monitor uh, how much uh, straws going in versus silage and, and, you know, potentially ruin the mix by putting in too much. I've never done that with a 
TMR mix in a trailer before, but I can only imagine that it's a possibility to put too much. All right, let me grab the weight so I don't lose it. Okay, what time is it? 1.30. All right, let's get that lot graveled and then uh, perhaps uh, we'll hear from Steve. And if we hear from Steve, it would be great if while we're down checking out whatever it is he wants us to spend our money on, uh, it'd be great if I can get the contractor in here to put the building in. So let's head over here and we will get the yard ready. I'm thinking if I got a truck coming in and out of here, I'm going to want to probably put some gravel down in the road here, too. I don't think leaving it dirt is a good idea. And I wonder if any of these trees are going to get in the way. W worry about that after. Let me just pull over to the side here. Just I never see... Um, I don't even know my neighbor's name over there. But uh, I never see anybody coming in and out of here, so I don't know that they use... There's a gate down at the end there that accesses the... Uh, the far Like it belongs to the farm next door, I believe. But... Uh, uh, okay, let's see what we can do about getting this yard set up. Nothing fancy. The contractor literally just said, put down gravel. So get me a yard and put down gravel. So that's gravel. This is a yard. That should work. It's kind of a shame, um, you know, really <laughs> we sort of destroyed an opportunity to farm this, but uh, not the end of the world. I figured I'd leave the hedge up for now because I don't know what kind of activity is going to be in and out of here. And rather than risking somebody driving into our grass yard, uh, I figured I would just uh, <clears throat> do that anyways. Uh, keep the keep the hedge there. I mean, you know, eventually we could maybe get rid of the hedge if it's too many bugs or whatever, and we could um, put down uh, put a fence in also. But hey, can't get much more square and flat than this. So hopefully, uh, hopefully it fits in here. And then I got some gravel down on the road here too. So uh, what is it? One thirty in the afternoon. No, two almost two o'clock. Fourteen. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do? We're gonna pop back over to the house here. I'll get on the phone with old Steve and uh, and then I'll get on the phone with the contractor uh, who can put the put the building in for us. Oh, it looks like we're about to make some more money also. All right, <clears throat> have a look. We have $221,500 right now. So it was about 3,500 bucks. Not, nothing huge, but you know what? It's better than the kicks in the you know where. All right, I'll be right back. All right, Steve sent me over the, the sort of pre-ad that they're gonna be running with for this case. So this is a case Puma, which I don't believe I've ever owned in my entire life, with a custom case color. It's a, one of the uh, case beige colors. Oh, Steve's gone ahead and put my license plate on it just so I could see what it would look like. Uh, so he did say that at some point I have the option to uh, to increase the horsepower up to 270, um, but I figured I'd run. I'd say I'd save about 10 grand right now if I ran uh, ran with about 250. Um, I want to say our current tractor, our current big, you know, quote unquote big tractor, is about 185 horsepower. So this would be a good good addition. I think it has should have no problem pulling the forge wagon like I just had a problem with and then the plow should be no issue all the equipment we have right now should be perfect for this 
Um, I've gone, uh, he asked me about wheel options. So this is a wide, uh, wide Michelin with weights on it. And, uh, anyways, we have the base interior. We're not going with the limited edition with the stripe. <laughs> and, and like I said, it's got that specific color. So, uh, this is a little over 50% off. So this is, would have been close to $200,000 had we uh, bought this brand new. And, uh, anyway, so I think I'm going to tell him to go ahead and do that. Sight unseen. Anyways, we did have a good conversation there. Uh, so hopefully I'll send somebody to pick me up. Uh, and I got on the phone with the contractor and he mentioned that he could be here almost immediately and get to work on our new yard. So uh, I guess I will just wait to see if somebody's going to pick me up and we'll go see our new tractor. It's two o'clock in the afternoon already. It's starting to get, the sky is super blue, which is nice, but it is starting to get a little... It's not really getting dark, I guess. It's just, the sun's just low. I can't even see the sun. Where's the sun? <laughs> Should be kind of over there somewhere. Oh, I guess that's what that is. That hazy ball in the sky. Anyways, that's why when you get behind the building here, it gets dark. So, all right, I guess I will probably see you at the store if I get a ride. Huh. Sorry, Steve uh, had someone come pick me up. I didn't realize they had a pressure washer over here. Not that I'm going to drive all the way over here to wash my uh, wash my stuff, but uh, it's kind of cool. So anyway, so Steve mentioned that he's got the tractor parked around the other side there for me. I don't think I really bought anything sight unseen like that before, but... Uh, uh Just like the picture, beacons and everything. I didn't even realize that. Yeah, that is a brown interior, that's for sure. Nice and quiet in here. Okay, anyways, let's get this back to the farm and uh, hopefully that guy's done uh, done his job for us. Okay, I just got a text message from uh, the contractor and it looks like he's done and $50,000 has left my bank account. Look at that. Smooth. <laughs> he somehow accessed my bank account, took the 50 grand, installed the building and left. So that's good, I guess. <laughs> so we're down... Whew. We uh, we arrived here in Ireland with one point five million dollars, and we're down. This is the first time we've ever been under a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> hey, new tractor day, everybody! Let's go over and see what this thing looks like. We're we're at eighty three thousand dollars. Oh, I missed the turn. Oh crap! Sorry. Put my four ways on. Let them know I'm backing up. I'm Canadian. Yeah, this is the, the lowest we've ever been, but we know we're making money in our sleep now with the uh, with the sale of the power. And if we can get the, we got a substantial amount of digestate already sitting in our, uh, sitting there. So if we can get that over here, then we should be able to make some money right away. Let's, uh, let's do a couple things. So oh, I did a good job here. You can put some concrete down, looks like. That's good. Uh, so this is the slurry yard. Ugh. Uh, now, the other local farmers can use this as well, but um, that won't affect uh, the money that we're going to make. Uh, but yeah, we can come over here now and and uh, and, and make uh, heaps of cash, so the broker said. Uh, I got another app here one of the guys put me on to. Hang tight, let me get into that. All right, this is a, uh, a time saver for us, or will be anyways. Um, every busy farmer needs access to inventory management like this, I think. This is, uh, this is cool. So if you look here, right down to like cotton, for example, I mean, we've been stacking cotton. Uh, uh, sorry, no, we haven't. Uh, we've been stocking. Yeah, we've been stacking cotton uh, in, our, in our shed there, uh, really with no plan for it. <clears throat> so we have you know, a little over three pallets, uh, sitting there and we can see that, uh, 
That's the current price for it, and that is the highest price we can expect. Although I've been told at times you'll see this price greater than this price. Um, but anyways, yeah, so it means that right now if we wanted to go sell our, our cotton over at the spinnery, well, they'll pay us five grand for it, so that's pretty good. Uh, and, and then right down the line. So the one I'm curious about, I mean, we're not going to, obviously, we're not going to take our silage or our, our hay and go and sell that into the market. We're, we're turning our silage into uh, into money. Um so we've so far, oh yeah, look right there. So, so far we've stockpiled about 6,600 liters of, um, of electric, electrical charge. Oh, it's going way up, 7,400 liters now. Uh, it is, so I don't know, it's not telling me what the current price point is. Uh, there's no sell point because I can't just obviously load electric, electrical charge into something and go sell it. It's going right into the grid. But uh, <laughs> right now, or the max max price for it is around twenty six hundred dollars per thousand kilowatts. I'm thinking, but maybe that's what we're going. Maybe that's what we're getting paid. I don't know. But uh, that's right there. Uh, the methane that is slowly building up, very slowly, uh, is is uh, you know is what it is. It's not really worth anything right now. Um, we may want to just take that and and sell that into the market also. But whatever, we'll let that build up and we'll see what happens. Uh, where are we down here? So there's our, so this is what we just built. This is the slurry yard. So we can take our digestate here and, uh, sell it for upwards of $700 uh, dollars per thousand liters. We can bring our slurry there for, you know, upwards of three, almost $400 and same with our manure. Uh, a side note that this will show you. So. If we're not selling it at the slurry yard into the international market, for example, it might go to Japan or Kenya or maybe back to Saskatchewan. Um, we're selling it for like anywhere between six and nine dollars here in our local market. So this was a no brainer, I think. Uh, the 50 grand plus the money that we paid for the, the like I'm not I'm not worried about the land that we had to buy because land is always, uh, you know, you can always sell your land. But, uh, you know, we just spent 50 grand on a building so i have a feeling we'll make that back fairly quickly uh here's here's <laughs> look at this, right we may make it back today um if we if we decided to sell the digestate that we're building up right now it's like worth a hundred times what it would be worth locally here by selling it into uh you know this might be going uh to somewhere in poland uh it may be going to uh you know Reykjavik, or it could be going to southern california for all we know i don't care it's they're paying us uh, a lot of money uh where we're not getting that selling it locally so this i think is going to be a good one for us i don't know that like i'm not in the next 10 minutes we're not desperate for cash so i don't necessarily need to uh bring the digestate over here immediately i do need a way to transport it over here so we're gonna have to figure that out i guess we'll talk to steve or maybe tomorrow morning at breakfast i can or breakfast <laughs> coffee with the boys has turned into breakfast pro pro probably tomorrow morning when i go and run in i can let the guys know that i'm looking for uh some type of tanker preferably um a truck body to uh to transport uh digestate over there and then i can also let them know that we have this new opportunity that they can all uh take advantage of so uh we're a little ways from needing to put in buildings for uh for the co-op students they're not going to be available until uh, november we have the uh silo right there moving the silage for us let's go check on the pigs quickly oh there's something so uh, let's look over here okay so this this uh, has been fantastic this um, greenhouse here just pumping out uh, the root crops the potatoes this is what's this one this one's sugar beets and this one is potatoes so in here We've got, remember before we had the pigs in there, we were just stockpiling in here. So we have a number of uh, sugar beet pallets already and we have potatoes. There's the cotton or the wool or yeah, the cotton, sorry, that we have. And then we have oats that have just been sort of piling up here for no, with no plan. 
So I think what we're going to do now is probably take the beats and put them into the, um, we'll take the beats and put it into the uh, BGA and then we'll take the potatoes and we'll move those into the cow, the cows, the pigs. Let's just look here quickly. All right. So we're still, we're not expecting, it looks like December before we see any uh, piglets and we have lots of food here. We've been keeping on top of that. Up to 2,600 liters of slurry. They have lots of straw, so I'm not worried there. And uh, we're good. So uh, if I just look at the mix of food, obviously we've been dumping root crops in here. We're low on some of the other stuff, but that's okay. I say that's okay like I know what I'm talking about. I have no idea what I'm talking about, but right now I'll tell myself it's okay. Uh, so I'm going to grab the trailer and well, get me, we'll, we'll use the new, uh, the new tractor here and then uh, we'll bring that over here and we'll, um, we we'll use the uh, loader there to get, uh, uh, wait, what's the best way to do this? Yes, let's do it that way. I don't know whether I'm, I don't know whether the BGA will take, uh, the pallets of, um, of beats right off the trailer I guess we'll find out let's 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 experiment here and see because then we'll know we can load the trailer up and uh, and and just drive over the dump point for the uh, BJ or or we'll know whether we would have had to unload the trailer uh, when we get to the BJ and then in that case maybe we just use the the loader just to run back and forth but I don't, I don't want to create more work for us uh, I'd like to create less work, to be honest with you, which is sort of why we're doing some of the things that we're doing, but let's just see what, what works here. I'm digging this case. So that's a case paint code, um, that, that this tractor is, uh, the, the color of this tractor. So it's kind of cool. Respecting the case brand. We didn't just paint it some random color. So I seem to remember if I have two of these pallets on at the same time, uh, weight becomes a little bit of a challenge, but let's find out. Yep. All right, so super realistic. Oh wait, I have one, let's go. I think it's a little bit of leverage too, because I know when these are sideways, I can carry two. It's not great, but I can do it. You know what? Let's test this. Let's go drive over to the uh, dump point right now. Let's see if it takes it right off the trailer. And if it does, then we'll take the time to load the rest. If it doesn't, then we're going to bring them over here, hopefully two at a time, but let's hope it takes it right off the trailer. Oh yes. Life is good boys. <laughs> That's exactly what we wanted. This tractor should do well with the uh, cedar also. I couldn't help but notice that our grass field has weeds in it. Um, see the little weeds in there? We have hit something invisible. Right there. Invisible wood. All right, got rid of that. Definitely one of the benefits of uh, PC gaming. You've got the easy dev mod where I can literally switch something on that allows me just to delete things. Not everything, but uh, in the case of that invisible wood, I don't know what I would do if I was on console. That's not a, a dig at console. It's just uh, pointing out something, something realistic. It's definitely... Uh, 
a, a bit of a disadvantage, I guess, if you're on console. So this will be the kind of stuff that uh, we should be able to get co-op students to do. Kind of this, like, some of the tedious labor around the farm. And then we can do our uh, technical decision making, right? All right, it's like I didn't learn my lesson the first time. Nope, didn't learn my lesson. I know that I can carry two pallets at a time in a very awkward and almost impossible way, but that didn't happen there. So we can actually put uh, potatoes and uh, sugar beets into the BGA, but we're gonna reserve one for, for feed. Um, in this case, it'll be the potatoes. There you go. I don't think I can get this onto the trailer, but <laughs> I can certainly drag it. Can I lift it? to have a nice little sort of job specific um, loader on the f on the farm then it could just you know be dedicated to these kind of jobs maybe a little bit more uh, oh there's the half pallet <laughs> might be a little bit more um, capable too uh, as far as getting around than this whole tractor a little more weight. This this tractor could definitely use a bigger weight on the back. Oh come on! I figured there was a half a pallet there. How come I? I figured for sure I could get the half pallet. Ooh, all right, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Oh, look at that move. <laughs> I beat the tractor before I had a chance to tip. Now I'm not doing this so well. Ugh, sorry. All right, well, I'll fit what I can anyways, and then we'll maybe make a second trip. You know me, I don't like second trips, but... I also figure I could have probably cut here and just uh, picked it up again when the trailer was loaded, but we might as well uh, suffer together to a certain extent. So with, um, I don't know whether there's like a, is there an audience that just watches this Bally Springs series and and not perhaps uh, Calmlands, which has been going on because it is a very different type of gameplay uh, compared to this with easy economy and, you know, 200 horsepower challenge. Uh, and, and also is, are there people that only watch the few and far between episodes on Hinterland because it was a starting from scratch, no nonsense, uh, no, no, 
assistance mods, anything like that, just a kind of slow moving, uh, you know, carve out your world type series. Uh, you know, I wonder if there's a, you know, is everybody a crossover viewer just because I posted content or are there people that watch just, just the specific series? Uh, if you're a specific Valley Springs series person, um, what do you think? Uh, is it worth continuing? Uh, I know that we're just, we, we haven't even got to cows or anything like that. Uh, do you, you like it? It looks like the, the amount of, uh, views that the Valley Springs episodes get, uh, sort of tell me I should do more of them. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming people like them. I love this map. Um, but I did, so I, I gotta do some, uh, soul searching as far as the content, uh, for this channel. Cause I only have so much time. Uh, my business is really driven by weather, a lot of cases, and, and there's some great weather, uh, obviously the summertime and that. So, uh, the ability to sit here and record hours on end and then edit farming simulator videos is going to become very difficult. This, the, the, you know, the, the one episode for every day of the week kind of schedule is is not uh not feasible when when things are really busy not to mention uh, i just uh, registered both kids for the racing series uh, for motocross because that's uh first race is on the 21st of april um so that's and our our local track's supposed to open before that i think next weekend the weekend after easter anyways so things should start uh getting a little bit more time consuming as we not only kind of get to the track and do all that, but then there's maintenance and you know cleaning oil, air filters and all the rest of the crap that uh, comes with it. But it's it's, fun. it's good crap. Don't get me wrong, but it's still uh, you know busy. So um, so I got to really think about you know I don't want to just go back to where before I was posting like twice a month. I want to make sure that I'm at least getting a, a few videos a week. Um, and and perhaps my so my thinking is that uh, i may be kind of mothballing hinterland for a while um and r just running with uh you know trying to do an episode a week on valley springs and then and then uh comlands will run probably for another week maybe uh maybe i think we're, we're getting close to like 24 episodes i think at one point i said we'd do between 24 and 30 or i thought i'd get to 36 but um but anyways uh and but there's another challenge in the uh, on the books uh coming and uh of, of another crust to design <laughs> I, I like it. he kind of said hey here's something i'm i'm thinking about doing and uh i i I never was one to say, oh, well, you know, I want to try challenges or, or really doing, and it was never one to do anything anybody else was doing, but, but honestly, it's, it's the Comlands one's been so much fun because it's, it, I, I probably never would have learned how to use course play and auto drive, uh, had I not done that series. And then I also wouldn't have probably learned as much as I did about productions, uh, or or maybe learned from from as many people as I did uh you know it was somebody through the Comland series that told me about that slurry yard I only just really started looking at these mini BGAs because of that series so uh so there's another series coming it's quite a bit different than the Comlands one um but it's on a map that I would likely never have chosen and um it's it's a hard economy and and uh so there is definitely some similarity to what i would have in the past been more comfortable with but uh, i have some ideas of how i'm going to try things a little bit differently in that challenge um so anyways it's 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 fun to kind of have certain things laid out for you uh as far as like you know how things are going to work and then and then you go and make the most of it so it's not a competition necessarily as it is more of a challenge uh in a hard economy looking at making a certain amount of money but having to pay off a certain amount of money first sound familiar sounds kind of like what we're doing here but um but anyways yeah it's, it should be uh should be interesting so my thinking is that i'm going to end up being uh one episode here and maybe two episodes there for three episodes a week in total as things really start to ramp up if i find a bit of a dead spot or you know for example it rains for a week and we can't the kids can't get the tractor train or whatever then um and i can't get outside to do what i do then especially if the kids are at their moms that week then you can guarantee there's going to be a lot of content made but anyways all right okay let's see let's see how this unloads 
Oh, yeah, look at that. Eat that, BGA. So we can get a total of 36,000 liters of... Uh, 36,000 liters of sugar beets into here. So what I wonder is... So if I only have silage in here, is it going to produce electricity at a certain rate? And then if I have silage and beets in here, will that essentially double the amount of electricity made during a one hour period because it's now got double the amount of inputs? Or can it only, regardless of what the inputs are, can it only produce so much electrical charge per hour? These are the questions that are going through my mind. And there's our 60,000 liters of digestate which at the slurry yard right now is worth uh, currently $42,000, but a max of $45,000. So that's pretty good. It's almost 50 grand uh, in uh, digestate sitting right there. And obviously the what we have sitting there already is going to, um, you know, convert into, uh, this, is, this number is just going to grow. So I'd say things are looking up there, kids. Um, so let's not leave this trailer here. I'm not going to bring anything else over here right now. There's a, a, a pallet of sugar beets by the greenhouse, so we may just put that into the pigs. I don't know, whatever. I'm not in a big hurry. I think what we're going to do is we're going to go to sleep. No, you know what? We're not going to go to sleep. I think we're going to say goodbye. Because I think we're rolling here. We have a new new opportunities uh, with the BGA. We have a new opportunity with this tractor. We have a new opportunity with um, with our international shipping of all products that stink uh, but fertilize. And uh, yeah, I think that's I think that's looking good. So uh, what I need to do is is get my eyes onto a um, what I don't want to miss. A, if there's a spike in the market, I don't want to miss an opportunity to sell um, to sell digest aid or anything like that. I, I want to make sure that uh, if there's a spike in the market, we get to take advantage of that. And uh, so I am going to have to find something to move. Um, basically, something that we can have loaded and ready to go. Uh, in in the in case uh that that price spike happens uh you know so like if i can have something strictly set up for digestate then as the oh I, we planted sorghum across the road didn't we i don't even know anyways uh so if there's a spike in pricing and we can and we have a truck loaded and ready to go we can just run it run it to the slurry yard there get the stuff sold and and cash in um, so I, I definitely want to talk to the boys. I, I assume there's some old farmer with an old tanker truck here somewhere that uh, is willing to park company with it and uh, help a brother out, you know? So yeah, anyways, I'm going to just get the rest of these pallets over here taken care of with the old international here. And uh, we'll go from there. So what I won't do between uh, episodes is I won't sell the uh, mixing wagon. I will hang on to that um, just in case uh, something pops up. I don't know what would pop up, but if we find an opportunity for it, um, that, uh, that'll be there. Well, I might try to... I was going to say I might try to muck out the uh, the pigs here, but you know what? We may save that for our future students. We'll let this, uh, we'll let the pigs really uh, generate a bunch of poop and then, uh, and then that'll give them something to do when they first show up on the farm here. I've been told that these students don't necessarily always look like students. Some of them look like they're probably a little bit older. A wide variety of uh, clothing and uh, facial hair and gender and whatever so what's this soybeans i aka pig food 
All right. Anyways, with that, I will bid you farewell. Please let me know what you think of, uh, of this series. If you do like it, let me know just so I know that I can continue making it and people will like watching it. I love playing on the map, but if I don't have to make videos, I'll literally just play on the map and I just won't make videos. Um, but if you do enjoy watching these videos, which I kind of assume people are because they uh, do tend to get, uh, you know, the response, like people tend to like them and they do, people tend to watch them. So I'm, I'm probably asking a redundant question there that I already know the answer to, but uh, make me feel good and tell me what you think. All right. Take it easy, everybody. 